Okay, let's go ahead and solve this system. And these type of problems in algebra are referred to as systems, or even more specifically, linear systems. Now, as you progress in your study of mathematics, uh, we can deal with more advanced systems. So it's a huge topic. But if, uh, you know, if you're looking at this problem and you're like, mm, yeah, that's the kind of problem I need to uh, uh, solve. Well, this is referred to as a system. And uh, it's likely... Uh, that you're in some sort of algebra course, okay? If you're taking algebra, even pre-algebra, you need to uh, learn how to solve systems, at least at a basic level. And this particular problem is a nice basic system that we can kind of talk about uh, some real fundamental concepts about systems. And uh, the cool thing about systems is that there's more than one way to solve them. Of course, I'm going to solve uh, this particular problem here in a second, but we'll quickly talk about some options uh, that you have when you're dealing with systems. So we're going to get into all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. I have a basically 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses uh, in middle and high school math. Those would include pre-algebra. Um, algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. Uh, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, very shortly, so stay tuned for that if that's uh, a course that you're interested in. But I also uh, do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for, like, let's say the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, maybe the ASVAB, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, Alex, uh, teacher certification exam like uh, the Praxis uh, series, or maybe a nursing entrance exam like the TEAS. All those exams have a significant amount of mathematics on uh, those uh, exams, okay? Oftentimes, very advanced math. And if you don't get through the math, you don't get through the exam. So if you're, you know, trying to prepare for these exams, just go to my website. Again, the link is in the description of this video. Check out my full course catalog. I should have what you need. If I uh, don't have what you're looking for, just drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you out there just uh, in your math courses that are sh struggling maybe in a particular topic or just in their entire course. So it could definitely help you out. Now, one thing that I can't do for you that you must do for yourself and you're the only person who can do that is taking notes. That's your responsibility as a math student and it's not optional okay so over decades of teaching mathematics it's just absolutely apparent to me that those students who take excellent math notes almost do very very well and the reverse is true those students even those students who are like um you know i would say quote unquote smart like really good in math they're like oh yeah i'm, I'm great in math i'm great in math and then Maybe they've done well in previous math courses, but they get to a particular math course, and for whatever reason, they get distracted with their cell phone, or maybe their best friends are in class, and they start talking, and they start, uh, you know, not taking notes, okay? Well, guess what happens? Well, they start having a difficult time. Note-taking is not optional, okay? And it's the one activity that's going to keep you focused, all right? Focus is the key to success in anything you do. And it's absolutely critical in mathematics. And the one activity that's going to keep you focused is note-taking. So make sure you take excellent notes. Now, in the meantime, as you improve in your note-taking, uh, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those uh, notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here is our system. And if you think you know how to solve this, I would certainly encourage you to pause the video and go ahead and work on that real quick because I'm obviously going to show you the solution here. You should always try to do these problems in advance before I do them. But let's go down here and talk about a few fundamental things about systems, uh, specifically linear systems. Okay, linear system. Now, this word, linear, Okay, if you look at the root word, it's line. Okay, so we're talking about lines like on the XY plane here. So here's a little X, Y. Yeah, it's not a great sketch, but you get the idea. So this right here, if you look here, we have an X and a Y and a number. This is an equation of a line. Okay, so in other words, we could graph this line 
on this xy plane and we can graph this line so we're dealing with two lines here so we have let's say i have line one okay then we have line two so graphically speaking a linear system we're really considering two lines okay so that's kind of the main idea here but we're trying to solve this system so what does that mean well if i was to graph this first line let's say it looked like this and then let's say I graphed this second line and it went like this. Okay, so here I had, let's say, line one, and this was line two. The point at which they intersect, okay, let's say this is, uh, let's just make something up. Let's uh, call this the point three, four on the XY plane, this coordinate right there. That would be the point of intersection. That is the solution, okay, to these two uh, lines, which uh, coupled together, uh, we think of this as a system. Now, this is, of course, very abbreviated in terms of that, but this is pretty much fundamentally what a system, uh, a basic linear system represents. It's two lines on the XY plane, and we're trying to solve this system, which we're trying to find uh, the point of intersection. Now, uh, without turning this into a huge uh, lesson on systems, because uh, you know there are other things involved, you can have systems that don't have any solutions and have many solutions. So if you want further help with systems, a couple of quick recommendations. Um, I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra uh, playlist, and also I teach this thoroughly in my algebra course as well. All right, so what are um, our options to solve this system? Well, you could uh, effectively graph both of these lines and just look to see where uh, those two lines cross, okay? That's actually called the graphing method, and that's basically what I just described there. But the problem with the graphing method, and you could have like a uh, graph paper and you kind of do this really neatly and precisely, but this is not a practical method, okay? But conceptually, it's a good idea to understand the graphing method. You still need to understand, uh, you know, how to graph these lines and look where the point of intersection is uh, at, but basically, this is not a practical application to solving systems. We want uh, other tools, more algebraic tools, and we have two great options here. The first is called the substitution method, and the next is called the linear combination or elimination method. Okay, so these are the two primary methods of solving uh, this system, and they work equally well, but you want to use... Um, uh, one over the other, depending on uh, basically the format or the form uh, that your lines are written in. Okay, and this just comes from experience. Some students like the substitution method. They're like, oh, I'll just do all my problems with this method, and they forget about this method. But you need to know them both. Okay, now happens to be that there's even other um, uh, methods to solve systems that involve matrices, uh, matrices like a matrix here. And uh, this is stuff that you'll learn in a little bit more advanced math. So if you're looking at this video, you're likely maybe like in an Algebra 1 or Introductory Algebra type course. But as you progress into maybe Algebra 2 or pre-calculus, you start learning uh, other techniques to solve systems uh, that involve matrices. But we're not, we're not going to talk about these right now. These are kind of the two primary techniques that you really need to solve. But again, conceptually... Um, you still uh, you still need to have the ability to graph these lines uh, nice and neatly on graph paper and then kind of look to see where those two lines intersect because that would in fact be the solution if the system has a solution okay so that's just a quick overview of linear systems now at this point if you're like okay i think i got it you know maybe you want to try one of these methods right here if you know them uh, because I'm going to get into solving this system right now. Now, by the way, I um, elected to use this method, okay, the linear combination elimination. If you use this method, the substitution method, that's perfectly fine, but I'm going to use uh, the linear combination uh, elimination method. Okay, so here is our problem, and the linear combination method uh, is basically... Uh, the following okay so it's the main idea is this we're trying to eliminate uh one of the variables so how do we do that well here i have my x's okay here i have my y's i'm trying to eliminate either the x's or the y's now how can i eliminate um, these variables well let's look at this term here the linear combination slash elimination 
So the, a linear combination is like combining something. It's like like peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Here's their peanut butter, here's your jelly, and I'm going to smash them together and form a sandwich. Well, the same kind of idea here. I'm going to be combining uh, uh, these two equations. I'm going to add them, okay, together. So if I added these uh, equations together right now, okay, I'm going to add down in a column manner, I would get what? I would get a 5x, I would get a negative 2y here, and then I would get a 19 over here, okay? So that's combining these uh, into one thing. Now, when I combine these, I still have an x and a y variable. None, none of the variables uh, were eliminated, so I'm like, hmm, okay, well, that's not really helpful. But what if this y right here, what if I had a positive 3y, okay, right there? That would be pretty cool because if I, uh, if that was the case, when I um, combine these, uh, the three, this positive 3y and this negative 3y would end up being a 0y, the y variable, variable would be eliminated, okay? So I'm saying to myself, hmm, that's pretty cool. I'd like to get a positive 3y right there. So how can I make that happen? Well, let's just go ahead and uh, multiply uh, this entire equation by 3. Okay, the entire equation, both the left and right-hand side, because when I do that, right here, when I multiply this 3 by this y, I'm going to get that positive 3y that I wanted. Okay, so that's kind of my objective. But uh, being that, that that's what I want to do, I still have to multiply every other term in that equation by three. Remember, you could do whatever you want in an equation as long as you do it uh, equally to both the left hand right, uh, left and right hand side of the equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow through. And this is the elimination method again. All right, so I'm gonna multiply this entire top equation by three uh, because I want a three Y right there. All right, so when I do that, I get nine X plus three Y uh, is equal to 21. Okay, now, uh, in algebra, uh, when you multiply a, one of the equations um, by a particular number in a system, it does not change the system. So in other words, this system here, uh, this system, and the previous system, they're equivalent. Okay, so although they look different, the numbers are different, they're still mathematically equivalent. All right, so now let's take a look at where the problem is at right here. So at this point... A couple things. Uh, one, I can multiply uh, or divide um, uh, these equations by anything I want as long as I do it both equally from the left and right. And in systems, you can combine equations. Okay, kind of more on this in other videos and stuff. But basically, the elimination and combination method uh, states that you can add and even combine two equations together to create a new equation that is still equivalent in the system. But when I um, add these guys together now, okay, when I add down, look what uh, happens to our three y's. Again, they're going to go away, okay? So this is going to be 9x plus 2x, all right? When I add these to, uh, right here, let's just show this a little bit clearer. 9x and 2x, I'm sorry, 9x and 2x, I get 11x. Then I have my 3y, positive 3y and negative 3y. This guy's right here, they go away, okay? They're eliminated, and that's the whole uh, a linear combination elimination method. And then I have my 21 and my 12. Uh, uh, when I add these together, I get 33. So now I'm down to one e um, an equation with one variable, right? This is now 11x is equal to 33. And this is great because now um, I only have one variable, not two, and I can just use basic algebra to divide both sides of the equation here by 11. All right, hopefully you know how to do that. Okay, to solve for x, and I get x is equal to 3. Okay, so if you're with me so far and you're actually able to do this, I must in turn give you a happy face, okay? Uh, that's pretty good, all right? So now, what do we do next? Okay, we got x is equal to 3. I need to solve for y. So what are my options? Well, uh, you got a lot of different options. Here is our original problem, okay? And we can just go right back to our original problem and plug in x is equal to 3 in any one of these equations. I'm going to uh, select this uh, top one right here because I need to solve for y. Okay, so I'm going to solve for y by replacing that x with 3. 
Okay, and let's see how I do this right now. So 3x, well, I know now that x is 3, so this is 3 times 3 plus y, okay, is equal to 7. So that's the setup here, and now I'm just going to simply solve for y. So I have 3 times 3, that's 9, or 9 plus y is equal to 7. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation, and I get y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so x is 3 and y is equal to negative 2, but what does that represent? So remember, in this system, all right, this, lo this line here I could graph, and this line here I could graph. So where they cr uh, cross, uh, where they intersect, is some xy point, okay? Again, here we solved this particular um, system, x was 3 and y is negative 2, okay? So this is the point, the location on the xy plane that those two lines would cross. So it's a good, uh, you know, as you're sol um, solving systems in the beginning, you should uh, do some extra uh, kind of uh, work by graphing these two lines and just looking, hey, do they cross right here at 3, negative 2? So if you have some graphing paper, you could kind of combine the graphing uh, method with uh, either the substitution or a linear combination method. Now, you could very well have used uh, the substitution method to solve. You'll still get the same answer, uh, but both methods are excellent, and you need to know both of these methods. Okay, matter of fact, you need to know all of these methods when we're dealing with systems of equations. Okay, so hopefully this was a good little uh, practice problem for you if you're studying systems. Um, now, uh, some final thoughts. One, watching me do this problem is not the same as you, you know, mastering it, okay? It's very deceiving when you see someone do something, you're like, okay, I understand exactly what they're doing. Well, until you practice it, you're not going to retain this or get better at this particular skill. So you need to do some follow-on work. Um, so a couple uh, suggestions. Again, I have a ton of videos on my channel in my algebra playlist on systems, so those, that's a good recommendation. And then obviously I teach this stuff thoroughly in my algebra course in my math help program. But if this particular video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And then obviously, if you're not a subscriber already, please consider becoming one as I'm posting new content all the time. Okay, and uh, on my uh, channel, I have uh, various playlists. Uh, so I have a ton of videos, been on YouTube for a long time, basic to advanced mathematics. So you can kind of, you know, hopefully uh, go through those various playlists to get the help that you want. But my best help will always be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.